In this video, we are trying to compute an interesting limit given by limit x goes to 1, x square minus 1 divided with mod of x minus 1, which is nothing but the absolute value of x minus 1. So let's first simplify this algebraically. So factorize x square minus 1 as x minus 1 times x plus 1, and the denominator is still the same. Now I will keep the denominator, which is mod of x minus 1 with x minus 1 from the numerator as a factor and the other factor I can write it as limit x goes to 1 times x plus 1. I can do that using the product rule for computing the limits. I can compute the individual limits of the components of an expression and if you look at it there is no problem in computing this limit which I have factored separately limit x goes to 1 times x plus 1. So it's very easy to see the value of this limit can be obtained through direct substitution. If I substitute x equals to 1, so this gives me 1 plus 1 equals to 2. So evaluating this part through direct substitution has simplified the original limit. And now we will go back and substitute this 2 into the original limit and see what do we get. So we get here 2 times limit x goes to 1 x minus 1 times sorry divided with mod of x minus 1. Now from here I have to split it into left hand limit and right hand limit. So the left hand limit is given by x goes to 1 from the left the same factor. Now in order to understand the value of the left hand limit I might have to recall the definition of absolute value function which is the mod x function. Now why do we do need to do that for this specific limit? Because absolute value function is one function which has different behavior which is like a piecewise defined function from on the both sides of zero. So this is the original definition of mod x but see I don't have mod x into my function I have mod of x minus 1. So what that definition will be for x minus 1? So you simply replace x with x minus 1 in the definition of absolute value function, you will get the substitution for mod of x minus 1, which is mod of x minus 1 is same as x minus 1 if x is greater than or equals to 1, and it is negative of x minus 1 if x is less than 1. So now when you're computing the left hand limit, so that means you are approaching to the one from the left. So that means x is less than one in its magnitude. So I will be replacing mod of x minus one with minus of x plus one. And if you further simplify this, I will find this is negative two times Limit x goes to 1 from the left, x minus 1 over x minus 1, which simply gives me minus 2. So that's the simplification for left-hand limit. Now, it will be very easy for us to do the similar calculations for right-hand limit as well. So if you compute right-hand limit, this will be 2 times limit x goes to 1 from the right, x minus 1 divided with mod of x minus 1, which is nothing but essentially equals to 2. Because when x is greater than 1, you look at the definition of mod of x minus 1. x minus 1 is same as mod of x minus 1. So we get right hand limit equals to 2. Now since left hand limit is not equals to right hand limit because minus 2 is not same as plus 2. Therefore, the conclusion is that the original limit which we are trying to look at does not exist. So that's an interesting way to prove. Now have a look at this function graphically. So I'm drawing x square minus 1 divided with mod of x minus 1. I'm using Desmos graphing calculator here. So when I draw this function, so you look at the graph of this function. So it's the function is actually not defined at 1. So from left, you can see the you can see when x is approaching to 1 from the left, the curve is landing at negative 2. And when x is approaching to 1 from the right, the curve is landing at plus 2. Actually, there's a jump discontinuity here because of the visible jump in the graph. So clearly, limit does not exist because left limit doesn't match the right limit. So that's a visual way to look at the same thing which we proved analytically. That's all about this. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.